Hi, my name is Kevin Frank. Uh, today is September 29th. Uh, once again, we have Dr. Jeff Andreessen with us to give us uh, a weather update, which is, uh, it feels like a change of seasons out there right now, Jeff. What do you got for us this week? Well, that's, that about hits the nail on the head. Uh, that's, that's what we're, we're definitely looking at or experiencing here firsthand in, in the Great Lakes and in Michigan. And on the front here, I've got a, this is a forecast of conditions overnight this Thursday into Friday. And and uh, it's, it's a little abstract, but if you look at the map on the left, those are surface conditions. The green is forecast precipitation, but you can see sort of a, an unusual pattern there associated with uh, geographically with the lakes. And of course, most of you who've been here for a while recognize that as lake effect precipitation. And it's, uh, it's because we have, uh, well, at least two large Canadian origin air masses from high latitudes moving into the region and uh, are going to be dominating our weather here. They, uh, on the right hand side, these are temperature anomalies uh, above or below normal and what you can see clearly we, we, we've got another very amplified uh, weather situation across North America with the big ridge out over the west. That's really bad news for uh, all the areas with wildfires because they're going to be looking at heat wave conditions under that ridge and you can see uh, departures in excess of 10-15 degrees, which, which again is the last thing they need in low humidity, no, no precipitation. In contrast, here in the Midwest and in the East, you can see all the blues and purples, and these are cooler than normal temperatures, which are expected here for much of the upcoming week. And that's, so again, uh, a taste of fall weather, almost getting into the late fall type of weather is, is really the, the uh, theme of our forecast outlook here today. Uh, looking behind at the last two weeks, uh, mean temperature departures on the left, and uh, I was a little surprised when I saw this, uh, given the weather of the last almost, it seemed like two weeks, we had all these days with uh, maximum temperatures in most places in the mid or upper 70s, quite a, quite a few degrees above normal, pleasant nights, but it only averaged out to be, uh, uh, well, depending on where you were, there was even in the southern part of the state, we actually were a degree or two below. That, that, was, a, that was a surprise. Warmer than normal, though, one to as many as three even four degrees as you go north, uh, especially up into western portions of, uh, of upper Michigan. Precip was also interesting, another, another uh, depends on where you were type of scenario here on the right hand side, with totals ranging from more than two inches uh, across upper Michigan. And they, they clearly have had the, the wettest growing season and even up until present here uh, during the particular year. Decreasing as you go south, and, and you can see here across South, central, and southeastern portions of lower Michigan, most, many cases less than uh, a quarter of an inch, some cases less than a tenth of an inch. Uh, and in some of those areas, the only precip they've had really has been over the last 24 hours or so. So it's been, uh, in, especially in southern parts of the state, has been a very, very dry uh, one to two week uh, time frame. And uh, here in Hazlitt, where I am, I'm, I'm probably closer to the, the quarter of an inch uh, type of, of total here. But uh, again, topsoils dried out very, very, very quickly with that persistent uh, sunny, uh, low humidity, warm days uh, over and over again. And, and uh, the grass, grass stopped growing once again. Uh, we, we've had a lot of extremes this year from one, uh, one to the other. But uh, again, given the last two weeks, at least locally where I am, it has dried out. Uh, once again, I'll, I'll be, be back to that a little, little bit after we talk about potential evapotranspiration. Uh, drought monitor for the US, not much change. In Michigan, we still have about 17% of Michigan uh, here as of last week reporting abnormally dry conditions. A little tiny bit, you can see some of these uh, brown colors here. This is moderate drought, uh, but it's, it's been stubborn to, uh, to leave. And again, given the last couple of weeks, I think that that is uh, not, not surprising. And we may still, it probably will still be there for a little while longer given the outlook uh, and, and depending on what happens over the next uh, couple of days. Degree day totals here for the season beginning, uh, starting on March 1st. In most all areas of the state, uh, significantly above normal. Uh, most areas one to two calendar weeks is where we're at. So we, we did, we talked about that surplus of degree days that we built up in the uh, late spring and early part of the summer. Uh, it was with us at the middle of the season or the middle of the summer and it's, it's generally still with us. There's a couple of exceptions to that, but across most of the region, uh, definitely uh, had a little bit of a surplus. And so most, certainly our annual crops have been able to finish off in most cases without any, any problem at all. And we've also, again, uh, a little bit of a, 
a little bit ahead of, uh, of schedule if it's uh, uh, perennial. In our forecast here, I, I mentioned fall conditions. Uh, we're going to see the passage of a couple of, of cold fronts with, uh, again, the Canadian air masses that I mentioned at the outset. Uh, we do have cyclonic flow, a big, that big upper air trough parked out over Ontario, and that's what's leading the steering mechanism leading these air masses uh, southeastward into, into the lower 48, especially into the Great Lakes region. A couple of other things with that as well. Well, there is a little bit of lift with some of these uh, uh, frontal systems. There's not a lot of moisture though to work with, so there is a, there's a chance of showers uh, when the fronts do go through. But on the back end, because of uh, the Great Lakes still mainly in the low and mid 60s water temperatures and having air temperatures in the 30s and 40s passing over those, that's enough to set off lake effect cloudiness and also lake effect showers. That's, uh, that's something else you'll see here uh, as we move ahead. But in terms of timing here, we do have, there's very cold air aloft and that, that creates uh, relative instability, especially during the day. So we could have a few pop-up showers here today, especially across the northern part of the state uh, in, in Michigan. But the better chances for precip will come later on this evening and tomorrow. Here's tomorrow morning as the, uh, the next frontal system you can see approaches and moves through the state from northwest to southeast. So we will see an increase in coverage uh, and actually an intensity of precip here. I, I think in most areas it'll be probably after midnight and then during the day tomorrow we should see uh, definitely showers. There's enough cold air there aloft. Uh, we probably could even see some thunder showers, so a couple rumbles of thunder. And also because of that cold air, don't be surprised you see a little bit of small hail uh, or some grapple uh, with a little bit of lake enhancement. It's not atypical, not unusual to see that uh, this time of the year. But uh, again, a reminder that of, uh, of the air mass that's above us is more like a little bit more like almost early winter than it is uh, like the middle of the fall. By Thursday morning, uh, not a whole lot of change. Another cold front uh, moving through, almost one, you can see every 24 to 36 hours, there will be another round of, uh, of precipitation with that likely on Thursday. But then after that frontal system goes through uh, on Friday, we probably will see uh, a little bit drier, although there will still be a lingering chance for more showers even on Friday and Saturday, but it will be primarily lake effect. So uh, let's say the northern and maybe the western part of the states would have the greatest threat. Uh, probably won't be more than maybe 40 or 50 percent probabilities in those areas, uh, decreasing to 20 or 30 percent as you get over to the eastern part of the state by late in the week. But when we look at what's in the rain gauge here for the next week, uh, still mostly on the light side with the exceptions in the lake effect areas, you can see maybe some quarter to three quarter of an inch totals here. Uh, in western lower Michigan and then portions of the Upper Peninsula. Most of that, once again, is it's related to, uh, to some lake effect, but decreasing totals as you go, from, uh, go east uh, and south from those locations, primarily a quarter of an inch or so, maybe a quarter to half inch uh, in, in some spots. So it's not, we're not looking at really any heavy rainfall, but there will be a continuing threat here, at least over the next uh, couple of days. That'll be the greatest uh, threat of rain. Uh, after, after this current weather system, the troughing and so forth, and the lake effect winds down during the weekend, there's another chance for a weather system by early next week. Right now, it looks like uh, that would be a low pressure system coming out of the Ohio Valley. And if that's the case, it will probably be something that's most, or the greatest threat will be across the southern part of the state. That'll be a little bit of a change from, from uh, where we've been here over the last couple of weeks, but that would be the next chance for any significant precip here after the end of the week. Uh, it's also, uh, well, potential evapotranspiration, I talked about water, but because of the low temperatures here, you can see the uh, impact that those have on our projected PET rates, uh, generally looking at only about five hundredths of an inch of water demand in the north uh, to, to maybe six or seven hundredths in the south. So uh, major, major reduction in terms of what vegetation will need, although the caveat would be, again, in the south part of the, the southern parts of the state, southeast especially, that have been missed by the recent rainfall. The topsoils are dry, so it's something at least to keep an eye on, albeit uh, the demand, the atmospheric demand is gonna be abnormally low here, so it won't take much water to keep these, uh, these things happy. Uh, in terms, the other, the other big news here, and this may be a bigger one, especially talking about uh, golf course management, turf management, with the cold air aloft, the, uh, it's, and, and definitely sub-freezing air, above the surface. The only, the only if question is, is uh, will we clear off or calm down? 
if we do either or both of those, uh, it's very likely we will see frost in, in many parts and freezing temperatures in the state. Right now, the greatest threat would be overnight Thursday, uh, Friday, and Saturday, uh, those, those three nights. And right now, it looks as though Friday night, Saturday morning will be the coldest. That's what you see here in this image. These, these are forecast temperatures right now. That's also probably the night that we would have the best chances to have clear, calm conditions. And physically, that's when we see frost and freezing temperatures at this time of the year, the most common. Uh, it's likely, I think, maybe on Thursday night that there'll still be too many clouds. It'll still be enough wind to keep things mixed up. But something to keep an eye on, especially, uh, again, overnight Friday into Saturday, you can see sub-freezing temperatures projected for many, well, most interior areas uh, in the northern part of the state, especially across the UP and the interior northern lower, but uh, still with temperatures in the low to mid 30s, that's definitely more than cold enough to get frost on the surface here. Even if the surface temperature is reading 34 or 35, it's, it's fairly common, especially in low-lying areas or undisturbed areas uh, that you'll get uh, frost formation. So keep an eye on that. Uh, we should see some moderation in temperatures probably by Sunday morning uh, and in, into early next week, although it still will be uh, remaining a little bit below normal which is where I'm going next with uh, our medium range forecast guidance. Uh, got both of the outlooks here today because it does suggest some changes occur in the one to two week time frame. The first for the six to 10 day period, you can see the projected upper air pattern, very similar to where we are now. Highly amplified, there's that big ridge out over the west, the big trough uh, over the Midwest and, and, uh, and the east. And, and again, not surprisingly with that, you've got uh, a continuation here of cooler than normal or likelihood of cooler than normal temperatures continuing with uh, really a, a, a toss up, uh, the near normal scenario, wetter than normal to our east, drier than normal to our west. So sort of a transition period. And what's projected to happen here the following week, and this goes into that second week of October, you can see that the jet stream is forecast to de-amplify a little bit with um, much less, uh, well, much less meridional extent of both the ridge and the trough. And you can see here, the result is a moderation in temperatures. And we go officially here for most of the state into the near normal category for mean temps, uh, some warmer than normal across the far western UP. We also shift more into that uh, drier than normal area that was off to the west uh, in the six to 10 days. So it's right now the, the model guides is suggesting a gradual but, but noticeable uh, moderation in conditions and also, uh, well, uh, more dry weather uh, returning here by the second week of October. And that's consistent with our, our new ensemble, uh, lastly here, of our uh, long lead outlooks. Uh, the month of October here at the top, you can see that those still call for warmer than normal mean temps. Uh, actually, for almost for all the lower 48. Uh, also, the uh, equal chances or no forecast direction for precipitation totals, although drier than normal conditions, you can see our forecast for south. And then for the seasonal, the October through December, you can also see milder than normal temperatures are still forecast uh, with, with the same, so basically almost the same outlook for, for both October and then the three month period. But the, uh, the moral of this story is, is that we now have a La Nina advisory from the Climate Prediction Center. It's been in place here for a couple of weeks and we have at least a, uh, a, well, it's a week to maybe moderate intensity La Nina expected. Uh, it's, uh, it's there now, but maybe to, uh, to get a little stronger over the next few months. And so while our forecasts here for the late fall and the early winter still suggest milder than normal or warmer than normal, uh, the outlook beyond that, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll cover that in, in an upcoming, uh, upcoming discussion here, but uh, that does suggest more wintry conditions uh, by, the, by maybe even as uh, New Year or certainly by January, the, the outlooks all then uh, go to the normal, maybe a little cooler than normal and wetter than normal. And typically, more often than not, in La Nina winters, we see a above normal snowfall uh, here in, in Michigan and the Great Lakes. And so that's, that's right now the forecast direction for beyond this, especially for the second half of the upcoming winter uh, because of, of La Nina. And I'll, I'll talk more about that again in the next time we get together. So cool, unsettled, unsettled uh, very, very fall-like weather expected here for the remainder of the week. Big change from where we were here over the last few days. Greatest chances for rain. Rainfall will be here tonight and tomorrow. And then again on Thursday with those frontal passes is expected to go through. Uh, more scattered precipitation possible, some lake effect, especially 
on Thursday, Friday, even into Saturday. It is possible it's going to be cold enough in the northern part of the state to see some of that change over uh, to snow or even just have some mixed precipitation. But uh, that, again, a major drop off in temperatures as uh, those fronts progressively bring a little cooler air in. And so we'll be, today probably will be the warmest day of the, uh, of the upcoming seven day period. 50s and 60s today, but falling off at least 10 degrees from that uh, will be in the third, well, the 40s to low 50s generally for highs here by late in the week. And then the lows, as you can see, also dropping off at least 10 degrees into the 30s and 40s. And as we saw with the graphic, uh, the threat of frost and freezing temperatures here by late week and early weekend, especially on Saturday morning. But probably some moderation. Once again, the pattern persists into the first week of October, but looking for some moderation after that. And I'll, with that, I'll, I'll wrap up and, and see if uh, any questions. Jeff, I'm sorry, I'm sitting here and I'm still a little stunned by you saying highs in the 40s and 50s, I think, this week. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it is, uh, and especially given where we've been over the last couple of weeks, uh, in you know the seventies, every almost on a daily basis, we get a little spoiled by that. And, and but this is this is definitely, a, I think, a sort of a dose of reality <laughs> coming up here for at least several days of it. It's definitely a dose of reality, but I like the fact that you say in uh, by mid October something will be uh, moderating a little bit. So winter, right? Is that's that's right. It's it, it is. It doesn't look like a long term. It will be here for the, but still, certainly, again, given where we were, it, it it'll be a rude. A rude <laughs> a change of pace, probably for many. Definitely. Well, thank you very much, Jeff, and uh, we pleasure. will uh, check back in with you in a couple of weeks. Thanks.